Hello Internet, welcome back to Asteroids VR. Uh, in this video we are going to be working on creating a triplanar shader. Uh, so this is what I have right now. Uh, it's a series of asteroids from the game. I've been doing a lot of work with it on my own time trying to get it caught up and honestly, just with all the time I've been spending on this channel, I haven't had enough time to get as far as I wanted with this. Uh, so. What we're going to be doing is making a triplanar shader, which is it's a useful shader for terrains or other things that uh, like this are going to be a little bit harder to unwrap. Uh, and in my case, I just don't want to deal with that. Uh, so you a, a triplanar shader isn't going to de have the same issues as it's not going to have the same issues as a normal UV mapped thing is because it's not going to use UVs. Um, so what it's going to do is there are going to be effectively three projections of a texture from the top, uh, from the right, and then from the front. And then obviously that's duplicated on the other side as well. And so with those, what it's trying to do is project them onto it and then map it. So we need normals, which is actually currently what these shaders are doing. Uh, this is a tessellated shader. Uh, so when you get really close, you can see it gets pretty intense. Uh, it's using a Fong tessellation from uh, Unity's thing, and then I've modified it so it draws the object normals. Uh, so normally you would get world normals, uh, which would mean they would all be based on world space. Uh, since our asteroids are going to rotate, we didn't. I didn't want the terrain to like shift underneath you. That would have been really weird. Uh, so what I did is I'm mapping it to object space, and I'll show you how I do that in a second. Uh, and what that gets me is it gets me a consistent look as even as this rotates because it's all based on the object coordinates. So that's sort of where we're at right now. I don't have any any texturing going on or anything other fancy stuff going on. Uh, so that's what we're going to be working on. We're going to be doing the projection, which is going to be based off of object position and then also the normal which I don't know if I have the object position, so we may need to get that. Not sure how we're going to do that yet, but we're going to figure it out. <laughs> um, what else? Yeah, so this is this is sort of what we have. Uh, this is our world normal space. Uh, this is actually the function I'm using to get our actual normals. Uh, so it's a normalized vector, which is multiplying our world to object matrix, which is part of Unity's uh, surface shader stuff. Uh, so this is a matrix that can translate world coordinates into object space. Uh, in this case, we're passing in our world normal and then just an empty vector because since this is a four-dimensional matrix, we need four, uh, four values to multiply. And so zero is going to prevent anything extra crazy from happening. So that's getting us our normals. Uh, what we need that I hadn't really considered and now I'm regretting, we're going to need a world position, which I think I can get this way. Uh, so one of the things that I want to change, go back and change in this whole thing, is I would much rather have a, uh, I'd much rather have all of this happen in the vertex shader. Uh, so we already have our vertex being defined and we already have the normal. There's no reason for us to go and recalculate all of that, uh, but we are, and because we are, uh, it, it gets a little bit crazy because because this has to happen every single fragment. Uh, so instead of doing it per vertex, like if we would be doing, this is ha like if I cover the entire screen, this is ha that's getting called millions of times, one per pixel, uh, and that's more than I'm comfortable with. And it's more than we need. So I think there's still room to improve this. Uh, I was kind of trying to get that working and was kind of running into some issues. Uh, this function, this vertex function, is also supposed to be able to uh, take a input, this input value, and kind of allow you to pass that out. It doesn't, it doesn't seem to work that way. Um, at least not with tessellated shaders. It, I was getting an issue with tessellated shaders and not with the other one. Not sure why. Um, and because of that, it, it just it just didn't come together. So we're doing this to kind of 
this, it's going to highlight the idea, uh, not necessarily a something you're going to want in your game, uh, but it's going to get it there so we can at least get the visual effect going. Uh, so, assuming I did this right, we should be able to pull out the world position as well and recompile. Everything should be good. And so now we should have our normal space or normal object space thing, a normal in object space, sorry, and our position in object space. The only other thing we want is we're going to want our normal uh, object space stuff to all be uh, to all be taking the absolute value of. We want it to all be in positive space, uh, if that makes any sense. Because what we're going to do is we're going to do the texture three times, effectively render this thing three times, figure out the color we'd expect to get, and then from that, we're going to multiply that by our uh, X value by our scales, and that's actually going to get us our final result. Uh, so we want our absolute value of our normal, and we'll just take X there, and then just do that three more times for Y and Z, and that should get us the absolute value. So in we should see a little change here. Uh, maybe not. Yeah, there we go. So you can see this line sort of going down the middle now. And that's sort of our middle section-ish. And then it kind of reflects back across itself. And so now we sort of have object spacey stuff going on. That was a terrible description of it. It looks kind of psychedelic and very disco colors. Uh, ignore this model. This model I need to redo because the, the triangles are all out of whack. Um, so with this, what we can do is we can take our position, uh, so we have our object space position, we can take that and actually calculate each uh, or where we'd be on our matrix. Uh, so we need three colors. So we'll just do a fixed four of our top color. And so effectively what we're doing is we're creating uh, three planes. So the top plane is actually going to be along our X and Z axes. Uh, so ignoring whatever vector you're actually is intersecting you. Since, so since Y is going up, we want the other two to form the plane along that. Uh, so our top color, that, that's effectively what we need to plug in. So text 2D, oops, 2D. Uh, we're just going to use our main texture for now, uh, because why not? And then instead of using these two uh, UV coordinates, we're actually going to just use a float two of our position uh, OS dot X and our position object space dot Z. And so that gets us <clears throat> that gets us all of our stuff. Uh, that's not a good description. That gets us effectively our plane space. Uh, so that's our first projection. And then we need to do that two more times. It's called tri space or triplanar things for a reason. We're creating three planes. Aha. So now we'll do a forward color and a right color. Uh, so right and left are going to be identical. There's no difference here. Uh, so forward is going to be along the z-axis. So that's just our x and our y. Oops, y. And then our right is just going to be along our x. So that's just our uh, z and our y. And I think those probably matter, but I'm just kind of throwing values at them because right now it, it makes enough sense. Uh, then I think we can probably just be clever with this and just do our color there. So our albedo is just going to be our c.rgb and plug it in there. And then effectively, this is just going to be uh, the sum of our top color times our normal uh, object space dot y. And we're going to repeat that again two more times. Uh, and then we prob no, we don't need to divide by three because it's a normalized vector. Uh, so it's going to have a length of one. Uh, so the if one of these is one, the other two are going to be zero. So for this one, we're going to do our forward color and give it our z. And so the, the axis I'm getting here, or the normal I'm giving it, is actually the normal of the plane. 
Uh, so since this is our forward vector, we do it along the, the z-axis. And then we should be able to just plug in our right color here. Oops, there we go. And that's going to get us our color. And so we should be able to plug that in. Uh, so I had already selected a color or a texture here. And it's looking a little bit funky, but it, no, that's not right. That doesn't look right at all. It shouldn't be stretching like that. That doesn't really make any sense. Unless it might make sense. Hold on. It doesn't really make sense. <laughs> Not sure what's going on. Let me try something a little bit uh, more interesting. I'm going to use. I'm going to start with a sphere because this is not going as expected. <laughs> so if I put this on here, well, that's useless. <laughs> Let's pass in a, a size here. Uh, so we're going to pass in a. I guess I called it a size. So we're going to call it a size here. Uh, make it a float. And we'll set the value equal to, say, 4, because why not? Uh, and what this is going to be doing is this is actually going to multiply our UVs down here. Uh, so we called it size. I'm going to pull it down like so. And then we just need to multiply each of these UVs by the size. And so by increasing this or shrinking this, we should be able to get different values. What I'm expecting is it should look fairly uniform, except like around the edges. There might be some weird sizing going on right around the edges. Uh, so if we give it like 0.1, oh, so that's multiple, that just makes it bigger. Oh. I suppose I could have figured that out, couldn't I have? So what I'm not getting is why is there like stretching going on here? Are one of our calculations wrong? It might be. Uh, I'm not. I'm not particularly sure. But this seems to be indicating that one of our calculations is off. Because if, if we go over here, this is sort of the effect I'm looking for. Uh, it looks very basic here uh, because we haven't we haven't done anything fancy. But it should be sort of, sort of this tiled effect. What I don't get as much is right along these edges, these normal edges, it gets a little bit funky. And I don't like that. Like I think we I think we can fix this stretching but I'm not sure what's causing it. Uh, what's a good way to try, or what's a good way to test that? What if we flip one of these? So if I flip the Y with the Z? No, that doesn't, that doesn't help. Uh, y x, y, z. Yeah, now I'm just trying things. OK, uh, this was supposed to work. I've done this before, and I thought this was going to be a cakewalk. There's a hole in my mesh. Why? There's two holes in my mesh. Why are there holes in my mesh? OK, that, we'll, that, we'll deal with that later. <laughs> So this is what it's supposed to look like. I already talked about that. This is what it's not supposed to look like. I I don't know why it's doing this. It Yeah, that 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 just doesn't look good. But what's confusing me is we have like these streaks here. So there's some seam 
that is not not doing what I expect it to do. So I may need to just take a closer look at this. We've got our object space positions. Oh, duh. <laughs> that should fix it. Okay, so it looks gray. That's because, is it? Yeah, there we go. I was normalizing the object space. <laughs> So don't don't normalize all your vectors. That's a bad bad idea. So this is a triplanar shader. Uh, this is more what I would expect it to look like. Uh, so uh, effectively, what it does is I already covered. It's kind of projecting those three planes in there. And the advantage of this is with like terrains and things. If you have a really steep mountain cliff, uh, with normal like height map terrain it gets really stretched uh, and the same is true here uh, with these I would need to be really careful about unwrapping them but because we're using a triplanar shader here it kind of it makes it less obvious where the seams are you can't really I didn't UV map these at all these are literally just spheres that I hammered away at in blender a lot uh, and they look smooth the textures look smooth and that's because that's the advantage of a triplanar shader is it gives you this. Uh, so effectively what we need to do, our next goal, ooh, those are one of the issues of using object space, so I shrunk these down a bunch. And so now they're really tiny. Uh, so anyway, this is sort of something we're gonna be working with. I have a few other plans with this. I not too extravagant, but pretty interesting. Uh, so we'll probably come back to this. Uh, I want to do some like merging and stuff. And part of the reason we're doing this in the first place is I'm revisiting a lot of what I did with Asteroids VR. I'm redoing the entire movement system and I'm redoing pretty much everything else. Uh, the reason we're redoing these is because I had been using Uber, uh, which is a material library. It gives you a lot of really cool shaders and can do like subsurface scattering and all that cool stuff. Uh, we need something that can handle instancing, which Uber, at least the one I was looking at, or in my research, it didn't support that. And even if it did, it wouldn't support it in open source. I couldn't release those to you. Uh, so you just get a bunch of empty stuff. Uh, so what I'm trying to do is kind of make this a little bit more useful to everybody. Uh, so you guys should actually be able to find these on the Asteroids VR GitHub page and be able to use these. Uh, not immediately. There's a lot of tweaks that I'm still working on uh, that I need to kind of sort out first. But that's sort of the end goal, is to get something that can actually be released open source so other people can play with it. I don't know how that's going to affect like Steam and all of that. I haven't gotten that far yet. But we'll, we'll see. But for now, this is sort of a triplanar shader. I tried to keep it simple and then I went on a long ramble because that's just what I do. Um, but yeah, so if you guys use this in your games, I'd love to love to hear about it. I, you guys seem to sound super interesting when I do some of these things and you always talk about using it in your games and I'd love to see that because it's, it's really inspiring when I see people just build things. Uh, so if you guys are doing that, drop a link or something or shoot me a message. I'd love to see it. Uh, if there's anything else you guys want to see or something you want me to improve or change, uh, let me know in the comments. Uh, that's sort of how I make these is I take it all a bit from you guys. So uh, if there's anything else, yeah, let me know. But until next time, see you, internet.